This morning, new details are emerging about a meeting involving a former Trump campaign advisor and an undercover investigator for the FBI. The New York Times reporting that just two months before the 2016 presidential election, George Papadopoulos met with a woman who was posing as a university research assistant, but unknown to him at the time. She was actually working for the FBI. And during the meeting, the woman asked Papadopoulos whether the Trump campaign had been working with Russia. Joining us now is Mark Mazzetti, Washington investigative correspondent for The New York Times. He co-authored that report. And Josh Campbell, he's a former FBI supervisory special agent. Mark, begin with you. It's your reporting here. So, so, so we already knew that Papadopoulos had met a Cambridge professor who was uh, who turned into a confidential informant, in effect. We did not know that the FBI had someone there. Tell us what you know. Right. So in September of 2016, uh, this guy, Stefan Helper, reaches out to Papadopoulos. He's a university, Cambridge University professor. He's also worked as a confidential informant for some time with the FBI. He tells Papadopoulos he wants to meet him in London and that he wants him to author a study about uh, energy issues in the Mediterranean. When Papadopoulos arrives, uh, he first meets uh, a woman he met uh, who was, who was no, who he knew as Azra Turk. We're reporting that uh, this woman, we don't know her real name, uh, was actually sent by the FBI to gather information and kind of oversee the whole process with Halper, uh, someone who's more directly involved with the U.S. government and potentially to gather evidence even to testify in court if need be. So it was someone to uh, sort of control the operation and sort of shows the extent, the alarm inside the FBI uh, 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 at this period of time. Josh Campbell, you say this is evidence the FBI was doing its job. Tell us why you believe that. Well, and, and I think it's important to distinguish. I'm reacting to this reporting, not based on anything you know I mm -hmm. learned when I was in government. It's important to point that Understood. out. But if you look at uh, what this reporting states, I mean, this is standard operating procedure for any FBI investigation. Undercover operations, the use of informants, these are investigative tools that help the FBI go places that they cannot go themselves. An FBI agent trying to get to the bottom of a string of bank robberies, for example, or a terrorist group, and yes, even a campaign for president that has you know these suspicious ties to a foreign adversary, an FBI agent can't just announce themselves and start asking questions. So you're going to use these tools that help, again, the FBI go where it can't go on its right. own. It's important to point out, and, and I've heard the president you know, this morning, he's already tweeting about it, uh, but he's calling this spying and his allies will say this is abuse. These types of operations are highly scrutinized inside the Justice Department and there's oversight. So you know, this will be, the, we're going to see politics come out of this, but it's important to keep that in mind. These are tools the FBI uses every single day. <coughs> Well, I, I, listening to, to Barr's testimony earlier this week, he said very openly that, that he has ordered his own investigation as to how uh, th this original counterintelligence investigation began during the 2016 campaign. I want to play those comments here and, and then ask your view on how far this will go. Have a listen. The scope of the OIG. Um, where does, do, do you understand or do you know what the scope of that report will be? Well, I, I don't want to be too specific. Uh, I talked to uh, to Mike Horowitz a few weeks ago about it, and it's focused on the FISA, the basis for the FISA and the handling of the FISA uh, applications. But by necessity, it looks back a little bit earlier than that. OIG is referring to the Office of the Inspector General, but, but Barr also made clear in the testimony he has his own investigation he's opening. Mark, you've been covering this a long time. How significant could this investigation be? Could it lead to the possibility of criminal referrals for oversteps during the start of this investigation? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 anything would certainly be possible. I mean, we know that as the inspector general is digging into this issue. Uh, we expect that he's going to have some kind of report in the next couple of months. And as the attorney general said, they're very focused on this issue of the FISA, the predicate for the mm -hmm. FISA uh, for another advisor. Carter Page. Uh, but they're looking at uh, the predicate for the whole operation, the whole counterintelligence investigation. The Papadopoulos uh, story is certainly interesting because at that point, recall, it was the reason, Papadopoulos was the primary reason they opened it in the beginning yeah. because he talked to a, an Australian diplomat about the Russians. Mm -hmm. And so um, his role is quite interesting in terms of <laughs> the backstory and what the FBI wanted to know. But as we now know, uh, he didn't have the goods on some real direct link with the Russians. Josh, there are legitimate, legitimate questions here, are there not, as, as to what is the standard that the FBI or other law, U.S. law enforcement can deploy resources like that to look at someone, an American citizen, mind you, 
uh, participating in a presidential campaign. I mean, what, what is the standard that, that would allow that, that decision to be made? Well, as I mentioned, something like this would have high-level oversight, high-level scrutiny. Uh, one thing I think it's important to point out is that, you know, I watched the bar hearing as we all did, and it's interesting that the, the framing here from the president's allies seemed to be that an FBI, that an investigation into the FBI is somehow punitive or pejorative. I think in my own judgment that that's actually a good thing. We need to get to the bottom of exactly what happened because I think that will help the American people uh, determine what's politics and what's reality, and having that independent inspector general do that work is important. And I've talked to people inside the FBI who think that this will vindicate them. You know, finally, here, lay out the facts. So let us show you what we did when faced with this situation. So this framing that this is somehow negative, I think, is, you know, is wrong. The problem that I think we all, that I have and that we all need to be focused on is that even though the inspector general is independent, if passed this prologue, we can expect the politics to continue. All you have to do is look at the inspector general's review of the FBI's uh, involvement with the Hillary Clinton case. They came out and said that there was misbehavior, but it didn't impact in the investigation. Yet we continue to hear to this day the president beating that drum that there was this corrupt yeah. cabal that was trying to help Hillary Clinton and take down him. So we're going to get the facts. We're going to know what happened. But again, I have no, I'm under no illusions that the president and his allies will accept the conclusion uh, that says that the FBI. I, you know, did something right. I think they're going to continue on all the way through right. 2020 trying to paint the president as a victim. Okay. We'll, we'll see what the results of the investigation are. Mark Mazzetti, Josh Campbell, thanks very much.